Hello wonderful person, this is Anton, and today we're going to discuss a first ever discovery of an unusual type of a planet scientists refer to as the steam world. Or a planet that's not just made out of water, but it's made out of steam. And because this is such an unusual and such an exciting discovery, we obviously have to talk about it. Although here, based on the recent analysis, there is actually even a suggestion that this could be one of the more common planets out there, it's just this is the first time ever scientists have been able to officially confirm what's on the surface of these planets and what it's basically made out of. And so let's talk about this in a little bit more detail, but let's start with this picture right here. The picture made by NASA a few years back, showing us that most of the planets discovered so far basically fall into one of these four types. And surprisingly, terrestrial planets seem to be kind of rare. Now obviously here it's possible that it's just more difficult to find them because they're generally smaller and obviously have less mass, but for the most part in the last few years, most of the planets discovered were either gas giants or Neptune-like ice giants and even more excitingly, planets known as super-Earths. Basically planets that are larger and more massive than Earth, but that don't actually seem to have same consistency. And even more surprisingly, if you were to combine mini-Neptunes and super-Earths, which seem to have relatively similar size and similar mass, they actually represent the vast majority of all planets discovered so far. And so these mini-Neptunes, or sub-Neptunes, seem to be some of the most common types of planets in the entire galaxy. But because we have none of them in the solar system, we obviously know so little about them. And in the last decade or so, there's been a few observations of these planets to try to find out what's on the surface. And so far, spectroscopic analysis of larger Neptune-like planets, usually the ones that are at least two and a half size of planet Earth, mostly revealed hydrogen-dominated atmosphere, kind of similar to what we find on Neptune, Jupiter, Saturn, and Uranus. But when it comes to mini-Neptunes, or super-Earths, the story is a little bit different. Here the observations were not precise, and the modeling and calculations suggest that they possess either hydrogen-rich atmosphere or possibly some kind of a volatile atmosphere, including the one made out of water. And specifically, these highly metallic, water-rich planets may actually have atmospheres that would be extremely stable over long periods of time, but fundamentally be produced in a very different way from any planet in the solar system. But obviously, theorizing and modeling is one thing, observations and evidence is a completely different story, and we finally have observations and it's actually coming from a relatively famous star system with a K-type star known as Giza 9827. A star system containing three planets, discovered by the Kepler telescope back in 2017. But all three planets were also discovered to be a little bit too extreme, super close to the star, orbiting at 1.2, 3.6, and 6.2 days per orbit. This actually forms a really intriguing ratio of 1, 3, 5. So basically these planets are more or less locked, and contain a resonance. But when analyzing their radius, it was discovered that they're actually not that different from planet Earth. The closest planet is about 1.6 times larger than Earth, the second planet is 1.3 times larger, and the farthest planet is approximately 2 times larger. But because of the proximity to the star and because of their alignment, they essentially became the primary target for trying to study atmospheres of these super-Earths and mini Neptunes. Because that's exactly what these three planets were, two were most likely super-Earths, and one was most likely a mini Neptune. And so since 2017, there's been several attempts to study these planets and to observe what's happening on their surface. And while initial discoveries suggested that the closest two planets were most likely terrestrial in nature, but may also contain relatively thick atmospheres. And so for example, the closest two planets, planet B and planet C, were discovered to be most likely rocky, even potentially somewhat dense, but with somewhat negligible atmospheres containing maybe helium, maybe hydrogen, maybe some volatiles. Although in reality, as of today, no actual atmospheres have been discovered yet, and the focus on the study was on the third planet. In other words, we're not sure what's happening on these super-Earths. But this unusual mini-Neptune, Gliese 98827d, because it was just a little bit larger, and because it casted a larger shadow on the star, allowed the researchers to study its atmosphere a little bit more accurately. And here they relied on a technique that's visible right here. This is referred to as transmission spectroscopy, and this technique relies on the absorption of the starlight as it passes close to the planet through the atmosphere and then becomes visible from planet Earth. And so here by looking at various absorption features, 
we can definitively tell what's on the surface. And initially, the observations from the Hubble from just a few years ago definitively confirmed no hydrogen and no helium, or essentially that the primordial atmosphere was definitively lost over time. So this was no longer your typical Neptune. Additionally, the study from 2023 actually discovered signs of water vapor. And by itself this was a little bit strange because we don't expect to find just water and no hydrogen, no helium. For example, Neptune and Uranus also contain water and a lot of other stuff, but for the most part they also contain lots of hydrogen, lots of helium. And so these initial observations by the Hubble were already somewhat unusual and somewhat intriguing. And so the next obvious step was James Webb Space Telescope. Which is exactly what Caroline Piole, Gorayeb, and a team from my hometown of Montreal ended up doing just now. In a study released just a few days ago, they essentially confirmed that this could be the first ever such planet we've ever discovered. Because it seems to be not just covered in water, it seems to be covered in steam. And so this object that's about three times as massive as planet Earth also has an atmosphere basically made almost entirely out of water. Obviously hot water because of the distance to the star. And so this is basically a new type of a planet. Right now it's just referred to as a steam world. But these types of planets have been speculated about for a very long time. It's just this is the first time it was officially confirmed. Previously though, just a few months ago, we have discussed a somewhat similar discovery of what's known as the Hycean planet, which may also be somewhat similar, but just a little bit different. Here it's assumed that the water is in liquid form, but this planet also contains a hydrogen rich atmosphere, which basically makes this water extremely hot, possibly in a supercritical condition, where it's basically still liquid, but way above its boiling point. You can find out more about the previous discovery in one of the videos in the description. And so just like the previous discovery of the Hycean planet, this is now the prototype for the steam world. But based on the observations from other star systems, and based on modeling and predictions, researchers actually believe that these worlds could be super common. Because so many similar planets have a very short orbit around a star, and because there are so many mini Neptunes and super Earths out there, these unusual steam planets, and of course these Hycean worlds, may actually be some of the most common planets in the entire galaxy. Ironically, none of them exist here. The solar system seems to be kind of bizarre. But because of this unusual discovery, there are now going to be additional observations just to figure out what's really happening and of course how this planet formed. For example, by looking at additional elements such as carbon and sulfur, scientists could start speculating on what's inside the planet and how likely it's to contain heavier elements. Because of so much water in there, the atmosphere for the most part is oxidizing, which means it might contain a lot of oxygen bearing compounds that pretty much bind to everything and interact with everything, creating new molecules. And so right now the next step is to actually see if this also contains additional metallic compounds. For example, there might be a lot of iron, magnesium and silicon, mostly in their oxide forms, forming a relatively large part of the atmosphere as well. In other words, because of the water and the oxidation, we actually expect additional molecules mixed inside the steam. But because current observations were not sensitive enough to see these additional molecules, including actually molecules like carbon dioxide, Right now the exact composition is still unknown, we just know that it has a lot of water. But the obvious next question is, ok but can life exist here? And the answer to that right now seems to be most likely no. Because even if this planet is tidally locked, and it most likely is, even the dark side of this planet is going to be really really hot. And that's because as you probably know, water is an amazing heat capacitor, so it's going to be distributing all of this heat across the entire planet even into the much darker areas. And so at the moment it doesn't look like life is a possibility. But nevertheless this is still a super exciting discovery and we'll definitely come back and talk more about this once there are some additional updates. Until then, check out the links in the description, thank you for watching, subscribe, share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, come back tomorrow to learn something else, support this channel on Patreon by joining channel membership or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow and as always, bye bye.